Yeah, I th you know what? I think the best advice I ever got about preparing for Kona was sweep your own side of the street. And it's the kind of race where every year we sit back and when we reflect on it collectively as a sport, it, a lot of things happen that you don't expect and the people who just chip away at it and, and really just perform at their level do well. You know, everyone's reaching for that extra half a percent. Really, you just got to get to your level. Stay healthy, be fresh, and make smart decisions on, on race day. And, you know, the guys who have done a mid-season Ironman, I think the thing that helps is experience. Like, I, I look at someone like Frederick Van Leed, who's been in the sport a long time, certainly has come of age lately, but has won big races. Abu Dhabi has won Kona. And I just know, I know Frederick, obviously as a mate, but his temperament, I think he's, he's well suited to defend the title. Sebastian Keenley, I think, has, has been racing, even though he's only 30 or 31. I think I read recently he just had his birthday. He's got a lot of experience. Um, you know, he's, this will be his third Kona. He's done probably over 10 Ironmans now. I, I read somewhere he'd raced in Roth two or three times, and he'll know how to prepare, and I think he'll know, he'll be focusing on recovery post Frankfurt. Jan is a I think everybody's excited to watch. Um, don't need to sit, you, sit here and give you his resume. I, you know, everybody knows what he's done. Super talented, and I thought his race in Frankfurt was very good. So, and I think he'll be suited to Kona as well. Um, yeah, and then Roth this weekend, which is a great field. Um, hopefully, those guys will beat up on each other. And um, <clears throat> but it still comes down to your own personal preparation, and in the race as well. There's there's so many dynamics. I mean, there's a lot of great bike riders there. Obviously, you've got Andy Starkowicz, you've got Keenlay, Luke McKenzie, um, guys who can really do some damage and, and go off the front. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I think the, the best interview I heard about that race in Kona was one Mark Allen did last year after the race, saying, you know, it's, it's a closed energy equation. You've only got so much energy to spend. And the race finishes with a 26-mile run. And, and I think we saw last year Nobody ran in the low 240s, in, in, you know, in conditions that I, I thought were the best I'd ever seen there. I mean, when the women's record goes and five or six of the age group records go, you know, it's a pretty fast yeah. conditions. And certainly that tailwind that we experienced up to Harvey, it was, yeah, it was some of the quickest conditions. And that doesn't always lead to fast racing if the dynamic within the race is such that, you know, people are attacking each other. And, and I think that's the interesting thing with the men's side of the racing right now. So yeah, I mean, we could sit here and speculate, who knows, but people usually will race to their strengths and I think the, the stronger bikers will try and really, you know, I guess put their stamp on the race in the ride, particularly the second half of that bike ride. But then, you know, you look at someone like Bart and Outs or, or Ivan Ranya who possibly could get off the bike, not even in the top 15, and potentially win if they ran 240. And both those guys probably have the ability to do that. I think Bart ran a 244 last year. I mean, everybody knows Ivan's pedigree, and obviously what he just did in Austria was mind-blowing. So, yeah, I mean, throw a 240 run in that race last year, that would have really upset the apple cart. So there's, there's five different ways to, to race that race. And I think each individual athlete has to figure out the best way that they can expend their energy and, I mean, the goal is to get to the finish line as fast as possible. Um, and it takes a lot of discipline and I think self-belief to let a group go and even give them five minutes or ten minute lead off the bike. But if, if someone in that field is confident they can run a low 240, um, well, you know, that could make for an exciting race as well. So <clears throat> the race is different every year. I mean, we haven't seen, certainly in my time racing there, I, I can really only remember one super windy year. That was 2008. And I remember that year on the ride, even the ride out to Kauai High, that the group just splintered and where everybody was in ones and twos. There was no group at all. 09, I remember being a very hot year, which slowed the marathon times down a lot. So I think you just need to plan for all those things and get in your best physical shape but then make smart decisions on race day about how to execute that's best for you um, with your level of fitness and, and level of confidence and belief. And, but it's, a, it's an interesting one and, you know, very hard to pick again. But I, I always like the guys who have done well, particularly in the previous year or two, because you know they have a level of confidence that it's hard to, 
to replicate in training and, and get that confidence from, you know, you can nail a great brick session or a great eight week build up, but when you know you've raced well there, particularly the year before, I think that gives you a level of confidence that you can't get anywhere else. So I always look to the guys from the year before um, to do well. And, but it would certainly be interesting to watch the, the results in Roth this weekend as well because I think a lot of the contenders for the Kona title are racing there.